I hate this job. Christmas came early. Uh, come in, over. God damn it. Yeah, this is McGraw, over. Police are poking around near the old fire road. Oh, uh, you might want to drop by. Over. The police, what the hell are they doing out here in these parts? Not too sure. I steer clear. There's a bunch of them though. Must be serious. Over. Yeah. Alright. Ten four. Over and out. Yeah, Chief, it's pretty bad. Uh, it's Jane Doe, about 20 years old. Looks like she got mauled by a bear, torn completely to pieces. Yeah, yeah, we got a zoologist coming in now to confirm that for us, but um, I'll let you know what we find. Shit. Chief, I better go. Well, well, well. Buck McGraw. What brings you here? Jackson, you know that's a stupid question. I'm in charge of these here woods. Heard something pretty bad happened down here, and I'm here to get to the bottom of it. Well, that's very nice, Buck. But this is an official police investigation only, so why don't you let us handle this? Why don't you get back in your truck, drive back to the sticks where you came from, do whatever it is they got you doing out there, shooting up squirrels, making fires. Why don't you let the pros handle the pros' business? Uh, no need for the condescending bullshit there, Jackson. Uh, whatever happened down here must be pretty daggone important if your hotshot ass is showing up here. What? Don't give me that look, Jackson. If all your tech wings over there are analyzing shit, that means something pretty bad must have happened here. Buck, what are you trying to do? I know these woods like the back of my damn hand. If anyone should be leading this investigation, detective, it should be me. Now why don't you take your fancy ass, get back up the road, go downtown, stay out of here. You don't want to muddy up them fancy looking shoes of yours. Oh, well, I'm sorry. But the fact is, Buck, this is an official police investigation only. You're not police. I am. So let us handle this. The last thing we need is some deadbeat cop who got kicked off the force mussing the whole thing up, all right? Oh, why don't you just move? Buck.
that gum. Who could do such a thing to an innocent little girl? Not a human. A beast. You sure are right, mister. Anything or anyone that would do such a thing certainly is a crooked beast. No, I, I literally mean that an animal destroyed this little girl. All the evidence points to a black bear attack. Who might you be? Dr. William Finley. I'm a, a zoologist working on the case. Is that right? Well, Dr. Finley, why don't you uh, lead the police work to the policeman? Take your ass back to the zoo and work with your filthy little animals. Hey, watch it, Buck. This is Dr. Finley. He's the premier bear expert on this side of the Mississippi. Is that right? Well, he may know a thing or two about bears. But you don't know a goddamn thing about Mother Nature. She is cruel and unforgiving, but she would never do something as dastardly as that. These lacerations covering the body, they match the four claws of a black bear. We found bear feces surrounding this entire clearing. Uh, you might have found bear shit everywhere, but I don't see any goddamn bear tracks. You see any bear tracks? Yo, look, Buck, it's obvious that a bear did this, all right? Dr. Finley's opinion says so. So, if you've already got everything you need, I think we can close the case? Yes, sir. All right, let's get a move on. Don't know a damn thing about police work. There's gotta be something else around here. What we got here? There ain't no bear track if I ever seen one. Bingo. What the hell would a private investigator be doing snooping around these parts? Time to pay him a little visit. Be a service. Wait, let me guess. Don't trust your wife? Am I right? Look, I ain't here for your so called services. I'm actually working a case of my own, and as of now, you're suspect numero uno. Oh, really? Hey, who the hell are you? Name's McGraw. Buck McGraw. I'm a park ranger up in the National Forest. Wait, that name sounds familiar. You're that asshole who got in trouble about a year ago. Falsified search warrants, right? Right? Son, not only is that not important, that's not irrelevant. And furthermore, it's none of your goddamn business. Now, do you mind if I get a load off? Go ahead. You gonna tell me what you want? I'm kind of busy here. Is that right? I take it the private investigator business is booming right now?
Does that belong to you? Yeah. Where'd you get it? I found on the dead body of a young girl. Couldn't have been more than 20 some years old. Of course, we couldn't identify her. She was absolutely ripped to shreds. Jesus Christ. Must have been Nancy Sullivan. She was in those woods looking into something. Nancy, huh? You mind telling me what your relationship was with this Sullivan girl? For God's sake, she's a college intern. 19 years old. What do you think she was doing up in those woods? There's this abandoned house just off the old road. The family that lived there disappeared like 10 years ago. Some people, they say it's haunted. So she was looking into it? Yeah, I told her it was a waste of time. All that supernatural mumbo jumbo is nothing but a bunch of bullshit. Well, seeing that she's dead, Maybe it wasn't just a bunch of bullshit after all. Maybe she was on to something. Bradley, I imagine the police will be by here pretty soon. If you was to tell them I was here, I may have to pay you another visit. I don't think you'd want that. Gotcha. Crooked old house. Kind of place something mysterious might happen.
That girl was bad news. She was getting too close. It's going to be difficult to keep the police from sniffing around here after that little stunt. Well, remember that it's your task to lead them down the wrong path. And if you are unable to do so, I'll find someone who can. Remember that I am the most prominent priest on this side of the country. You are right. Forgive me this disrespect I've done unto you. And child, in the name of the all-powerful Necron, you are forgiven. But let us hope that the police believe the story you fed them about the bear. Oh, oh, they believe it. That fool Detective Jackson has already closed the case. Ah, oh, then, Jerry, why do you worry so? There was a park ranger there, Buck with Brawl. You can tell he wasn't buying it. Oh, oh. Right, we're what is a park ranger going to do to us? <laughs> Leave these worries behind, and focus instead on the midwitch's soul dredging ceremony. I am preparing a special sacrifice for the occasion. Yes, sire. On the morrow's midnight, the blood of an innocent shall cleanse us in the eye of the demon heart. Now we must part. There are preparations to be made. You take the road south. We must not be seen leaving this forest together, especially if this ranger is as watchful as you say he is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what they're getting into. Bear dock. Wait till Jackson hears about this. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. This is Dexter Jackson's phone. 
leave your message, punch as soon as I can. That son of a gun always answers his phone. Better pay him a visit. If I ever seen one. It's like they got to him before I did. Time to pay the bear dock. or bullshit. Makes me feel kind of old. I just wonder if I could ask you a quick question. Ask away. Well, it appears my good buddy Detective Jackson is missing and uh, I was wondering if you could tell me where he was. Seeing as he uh, ain't answering his cell phone and uh, doesn't appear he's home neither. You know, Buck, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I haven't seen him. Not since yesterday morning over at the crime scene. Crime scene, huh? Interesting. Why is that? Well, I saw it was determined yesterday that a bear killed that young girl. Ain't a crime for an animal to kill someone. It's just bad luck. And yet here you are, going in a crime scene. I mean, that's just a figure of speech. Yeah, sure, Doc. I'm just gonna take a look around. If you don't mind. Now, hold on a sec. Do, do you have a search warrant? Search warrant, huh? Yeah. Okay. There's your damn search warrant.
Morning, man. Hope you're comfortable, Doc. What the hell do you want? Just let me go. Doc, I don't think you're really in any position to be making demands. Now, if you answer me one question, I'll let you go. Where is Detective Jackson? I was hoping you'd say that. And loosen your jaw at all? <coughs> Go to hell. Well, William, you see, I ain't leaving here till I get what I came for. And the way things are looking, I'm gonna be here a while. Thirsty Doc, you may as well get comfortable. I'm gonna get you something to drink. Drink up. Got anything to say now? <laughs> Now that's more like it. Where is he? He's in the, the old cabin in the woods. Tonight, he's being sacrificed to the Lord of the Void. How many more men are there? There'll be three men guarding him. Arms. Please let me go. Fred, I can't do that just yet. I got a plan. You're a part of it. Where is Brother William? It's almost dark and the ceremony is about to begin. Patience, my brother. He will come. I can feel his spirit in the dark nether, and it draws near. How's that for fashionably light?
<sighs> Careful with that pocket knife there, son. Wouldn't want you to cut your finger with it. Unless you want to go great in the lake of hellfire. I'll put that gun down. Give us one reason. Well, now, I'll give you two, son. Reason number one. Your boy over there has got a vest, and uh, it ain't no Hollywood fashion statement. It's a box. Correct the moon nose, senor. Reason number two. This high-tech device I got here in my hand is a dead man's trigger. If you was to kill me, you'd all die. Freytel, what do you want? Well, I want Detective Jackson. Alive and in one piece. Well, how do we know that when we give you Detective Jackson, you'll disarm the bomb? You don't. You're just gonna take my word for it. But I'm warning you. I'm buck wild right now. I got to the count of ten to hand over the detective. I'll blow you all to hell. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. So, you know, that wasn't so hard, was it? You boys uh, have a good night. There's plenty of raccoons and squirrels and whatnot that you can sacrifice to your demon lore without killing a soul and uh, breaking the law on my forest. Uh, thanks for the tip. No problem. You boys have a nice night. Fool, untie him. We may yet bathe in the blood of our inferiors this night! Kill him! <laughs> He's still out there! We're all gonna die! Shut up! The Night Mother will protect us! Now, get out there and bring me back a still bleeding heart! Take you in for this. I, 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 What's the matter, Jackson? A fire just <laughs> came through this room, killed all these poor souls. Oh, yeah. If only I could have done something to help. Now, seeing as I don't have no handcuffs, I'm only a park ranger. Would you arrest this son of a bitch on my account? Sure. After the events of that day, Detective Jackson began to understand a bit about how a man like Buck operates. Without Buck's uncompromising pursuit of justice, Jackson would be deader than a doornail. Hell, a tough guy like Buck is worth having around, even with all the trouble he causes. Jackson knew that better than anyone after Buck saved him from certain decapitation. He gave Buck the police chief's phone number, said he put in a very good word for him. 
All Buck had to do was call, and he'd be made a police officer again. The forest tends to affect men in a way they can't describe, though. Once you've spent some time under a clear blue sky, breathing in that crisp air without a hint of civilization around you, well, you begin to know what it is to be truly free. And freedom is something that isn't easy to give up, especially for a patriotic man like Buck McGraw.